Hi, I'm Andre. I'm going to show you how to make this low poly animated water material. So let's see what we have. So as you can see, we have reflection, we have specular, we also have refraction. If you look, the rocks are uh, deformed by the water surface. And we also have depth. So as you go deeper into the water, the water becomes uh, more opaque. And last thing, uh, we also have um, vertex animation for the water surface, as you can see right here. Okay, so let's see what are the options for this. So we have the regular material properties right here like metallic roughness and stuff if we modify them we can see uh, the effects then we have water depth properties and water surface properties so for the depth we can uh, control the opacity like this and the maximum and minimum and there's also the refraction and we'll see that later and we have water properties, uh, water surface properties. And here we can control the waves. So if we make the wave height bigger, then we can see there are bigger waves like this. And there's also wave speed. So you can get this higher like this or lower. So let's see how we can implement this. So first you'll need a plane, a simple plane like this one, but which is broken down into uh, polygons like this. It should be uh, equal size polygons. So this is used to make the, the, the animation of the water surface. Okay. So let's go ahead and make the material. like this. So we'll put in the basic uh, uh, components right now and see about the complicated stuff later. First of all, you have to change the type of the material. So here for the blend mode, select translucent and for the lighting mode, select surface translucency volume. So this is, uh, we do this in order to have uh, translucency and refraction also. So let's go ahead and put the color in. So we'll choose a constant that we're going to turn into a parameter like this. We'll take something from the green like this, plug it in. We take a constant that turn into a parameter for the metallic. Normally we don't need the metallic, but this could uh, uh, create some interesting effects. So we'll just plug it in. And if you don't want it, don't, you don't use it. So we'll leave it to zero. Then specular, which we'll leave to at 0 0.5 by default, like this. And the roughness. Like this, we'll, we'll put that to 0 0.2. Let's also put in the refraction. We'll put that at 0 0.9. Now, for the opacity, we could put a slider and try it like that and see how it works, but I think we're just go, going to go ahead and create the depth fade. So the depth fade uh, actually changes the opacity. So for that, we're going to use a node called depth fade like this. What this does is uh, if you look here, 
So the depth fade, what it does is that from the surface of the water, as you go deeper into the water, it actually raises the opacity or actually raises a certain valley that we're going to plug into the opacity. But it creates a gradient from the surface to as you go deeper. And so that uh, helps us modify the opacity from the surface of the water to as you go deeper, the opacity will get deeper. So that means as you go deeper, this color is going to be more visible. So here we can, we have max, uh, sorry, we'll just use a parameter for this. The opacity is actually the max opacity. So that means this is the maximum opacity as you go deeper into the water. And the fade distance will actually be the distance from the surface of the water as you go deeper which it uses to fade th to this max opacity so it's gonna make a gradient from zero to this uh, to this distance actually and with a value of a max opacity so we'll put here fade distance like this so put this to 300 by default and max opacity to 0 0.9 let's say because as opaque as it is you know the, the depth of the water it's always you can always see something so it's better to put it like this normally we could put one but okay and this in order will also add some uh, shifting on the vertical and I'll, I'll show you why later so we add and uh, we'll add a parameter called water depth offset. And I'll show you how it works. So we plug this into the opacity. So later we're gonna plug in something into normal and world position in order to make this for the normal will make the low poly look and here will animate but for now let's try it out like this so this takes a um, while to compile it's probably because it's a more complicated shader because for the other shaders I didn't have this problem so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a material instance for this and plug this in and manipulate this and see what it gives us. So again here you have the depth it's gonna increase the opacity as you go deeper into the water and this here the water depth offset it's actually gonna take this uh, profile this uh, uh, fade that we've got here and shift it that if we add to it, we just shift it vertically. Okay, so let's see. So we'll make a material instance here. Like this. And we'll drag in the water. And we'll keep this here and apply the material instance. Okay, so first as you can see, um, well, doesn't look really good right now. So let's play around with the fade distance. Uh, it's probably not that. Let's see. Specular water depth offset. So this is the problem. Let's put this to zero. Okay. So the fade distance as you can see if you go this is actually depth so it's not vertical okay it's depth as this is goes deeper okay so this means that the limit that we've set here the max opacity let's put, let's put this to one so the max opacity goes deeper and deeper and makes a gradient bef between this depth and the water surface uh, from this to zero actually okay so 
that means as you can see now we can't see the shore the the uh, sorry the water at the shore so this is why we added water depth offset because what this does is actually takes the gradient that we've created with this and shifts it up upward so the gradient stays the same it's just shifted because we added to it so as you can see of course it raises the depth here uh, because it's completely shifted but now we get this uh, uh, shoreline here at the water so this is useful because if we leave it to zero it's not it doesn't look so realistic okay so you can use this to make the sh shore more visible and then if you want more um, visibility into the water you make this bigger like this and there's also if we raise this we have a more gradual uh, change in the opacity as you can see it's not so uh, abrupt okay so this looks good we're not gonna mess around with this I think it's okay let's go ahead and make the low poly look and the uh, most important the animation of the vertices so for the low poly look we're going to use the normal and there's a formula for that which i don't really understand but i know it so i'll just show you so we'll take the world position of the vertices and we'll do a derivative ddx like this and ddy and we'll do a cross product of that like this <clears throat> so this is it so this is how we get the low poly look because what it does is instead instead of smoothing out the um, values between the vertices is actually for one polygon it takes only one value so the normal it makes it like a flat surface okay so let's go ahead and see the most complicated thing which is not really that complicated which is the animation of the vertices so in order to animate the vertices we're going to use a texture that we're going to slide on the surface of the water so and also modify its uh, contrast, but we'll see that. So we'll use a texture sample here. And there is a file called low resolution blur noise. If you look into the files of the engine, you'll actually find this. So it's really simple. Just, just go into the files of the engine and, and look for this and you'll find it. It's just a noise a blurred noise that's it's actually simple to do in a graphical program but so now what we'll do with this is uh we have this on the surface of the water and slide it over okay so in order to make this slide we're actually gonna need this the uvs change the uvs the texture coordinates so Let's get the texture coordinates like this. So in order to slide this, we're going to have to add to the texture coordinates. So we'll put add here. Okay. Now, what do we add? Well, we add something that it's, uh, that it's relative to time because we want to uh, when we slide it it's gonna be during a period of time so we'll take the time <clears throat> and in order to control the speed so it's actually gonna uh, take so we'll take the time and we'll multiply with something to get the speed that we want and that we're gonna add here to the texture coordinates so we'll multiply this with a wave speed. I'll actually take this from here 
and we'll create wave speed. So speed times time gives us a distance that we're going to add to the texture coordinates. Now we could, because this is an aggregated value of u and v, uh, we have to append to it. So append, uh, sorry, like this. So if we want it here, we could use a wave speed different on the u and on the v axis. But we just use the same thing. So we just plug the, the two values here. Like this. So now again, we have the times, the time times the speed. Uh, and we'll put this uh, lower. Put just a one, let's say. Okay. Which gives us a distance that we'll put a, on the U and V axis and we'll add this to the texture coordinates. So now, as time moves, this texture will actually slide like this. So it slide, it's going to slide on the diagonal from the U and V. Okay. Okay, now, in order to control, we could plug this in, okay, and it should be okay, it works, but in order to control the size of the waves in the horizontal plane, we're actually going to have to scale the UV coordinates. So, normally we would multiply this, so use multiply, like this, and uh, just plug it in, but... The thing is, if we want to have a control like here, we want to have wave size, which is going to be the horizontal wave size. So not in the vertical, but like this. Okay. So if we want to have this, and as this goes bigger, we want the waves to get bigger. This means that we have to divide the textural coordinates. Because as this value goes bigger, we want the texture coordinates to get smaller. So it's actually it's actually gonna sm um, it's gonna zoom in to the details. So that means that th these details, the smaller details, would get bigger. So that gives us a bigger wave. Okay. So let's leave it to one and plug it into the UV. So now we actually have. The waves, uh, we can control the waves horizontally, so we'll slide them and we control their horizontal size. Now we knew, we need to scale them on the vertical. So uh, we for to get this profile that we have here and use it on the vertical, uh, we just to uh, use the alpha here, but if you have a colored image, you can use any one of these channels, but we're just going to use this one. Okay. So we'll add the control that we have seen, I've shown you, which is wave contrast. So what this does, <coughs> we're just going to apply a contrast like this. We'll take a cheap contrast. We don't need something complicated. Okay, this is fast to execute. Okay, so what this will do is actually increase the difference between the minimum waves and uh, the smaller waves and the larger waves. So this is useful if we want to have a contrast, a wave that it varies on the vertical a lot. Okay, so... Uh, and we'll also need, in order to exaggerate the wa waves even more, we're going to multiply that value. So it's actually going to take the contrasted image from here and stretch it even more on the vertical. So for that, we're going to use wave height here. Like this okay and if we I don't know if we can get the preview real-time preview okay uh, 
Okay, so this is basically it. So we can plug it into the world position. So this is going to drive the position of the vertices from their actual position, which is on the surface right now. It's going to move them up and down and left and right. Okay, so this, I'm not sure we're going to get a preview here, but the contrast actually makes this image contrasted. So the difference between the white and blacks. Okay, so we can see that. Okay. So if we take the contrast, we bring it higher, we can actually have flat waves if we want, but yeah, like this, okay. But we just leave it to one, for example, like that. So yeah, the wave height, it actually takes this image that is created from the contrast and uh, amplifies it even further because the contrast has limited just contrast is contrasts between the the minimum and the maximum but it doesn't uh, scale it so if we want to make the waves even bigger we will use this okay so I think this is it so that's the whole material okay like this I'll show you quickly so you get an image okay so now we can go ahead and save so yeah this is going to take a while like a minute or something um, so just I'll just talk about the refraction the refraction is actually interesting because the only value that I found to work correctly it's like something like 0 0.95 so if you use other values what you'll see is there is it's going to be a limit that it's forming and it's going to form another image on the surface so i would uh, i would keep it at 0 0.95 if you put it to 1 it's not going to show anything actually so just something close to 1 but as you go closer to 1 the the effects of the deformation will get lower so you won't see any difference at 0 0.999 or something okay so let's see let's use okay so we, we already have this here okay so we've finished developing the material let's see how we can control it so we go more in depth here so the fade we've seen the fade okay the opacity so we'll leave this as it is and we go ahead for the wave contrast wave height wave size wave speed here okay so let's as we can see there are no waves or there are small waves that are getting let's make this bigger okay okay so we can see something now the speed is really high okay so we'll put this lower two I'm oh, sorry, that was actually wave size. So we'll leave this to one, like this. And we'll put the wave speed lower, like this. Okay, so it's already better. And so the wave horizontal size. So we'll make this smaller. As you can see, the waves are really big right now. So it's, it's, they go from here to here or something. Okay, so we'll, if we get this lower, like this, we can see that it, the variation is, uh, we get the smaller waves, okay? So let's get this even lower, something like this. Okay, so now we're trying to get something, we're gonna get something realistic, okay? This is a really windy day. <laughs> okay, so let's get this color more dark like this okay so it's starting to get more realistic okay so as you can see if you look at the rocks the refraction works okay so let's let's see let's finish with the waves so the wave contrast so what this does again it's accentuate but if we go this higher so we can get waves that are limited as you see here because the contrast gets so high that it limits the blacks and the whites 
okay so the black and the white levels so i would not go too far with this okay let's leave it to here or even you know just leave it to one or yeah you can go get this lower if, if you want a really small difference in the waves like this something like this okay but let's go with one and now if we want to accentuate this we use wave height like this so this takes the profile that we have here and stretches it even further on the vertical so as you can see it's really accentuated now okay so this we added this because it doesn't limit as we, the contrast, as you can see, if we get this higher, get some weird stuff, it's because it's limited. So let's leave this to even 0 0.8 like this, okay? And now we can go this really high with this and it just, it won't limit like the other one, okay? this is good let's get the speed even lower like this okay and well maybe a calm lake like this or i think this is it okay so now we've seen this let's look at the refraction now the refraction is weird because it has to do with the screen space reflections and it has to do with the camera location. So if you go further away, there's a limit at the edge of the water. So let's put this, let's say we want this 0 0.5. Now what's going to happen is you're going to have this limit here that so as you can see, so it's, it's a refraction is really high right now and it's going to distort the objects a lot. So it's maybe it looks nice. I don't know exactly, but the problem is it's adding this limit in the water that you're going to see. And if you go uh, further away, actually this limit is here. So you can't even see the rocks deform you can't the rocks are not even deformed because this limit actually as you go f closer it grows okay so just barely now you can see the rocks deformed and they are so deformed that it's not it's not doesn't look realistic so i would uh, suggest that you keep this at 0 0.95 so now the limit is so close that you can't even see it very well. As you can see, there's a here, the limit. Yeah. So if you look into the water, it actually deforms a little bit. And let's see here. It's here that we can see it more clearly. So, or even 0 0.9 like this. So as you can see here, it deforms. The image of the rocks okay <clears throat> so i think that's it we've seen yeah so if you want to have fun you can use something like a metallic and get this higher so what we'll do is actually will it will color the surface of the water with its color that you have here so if you want more something like uh stylized material you can you can get this to one or so or even further yeah so it's definitely something interesting and there's also let's get this to zero actually and there's also uh, max not fade distance like this the roughness yes you can get this higher or like this so it's something interesting also maybe something like this yeah 
Yeah, 0 0.26. So it gives an interesting um, effect. But in something to note here is that when you make the roughness uh, higher, um, it will affect differently the, the specular that you get here and the screen space reflections. As you can see, there are no reflections right now. So if we get this lower, the reflections start to appear. So there is a difference. The reflections will disappear, but the specular will show for a as you can see, so now the reflections disappear, but the specular still shows. That's probably because the light that is coming from the sun is really strong. Yeah, so it's something to note. Uh, and yeah, so you get also a shore, a shore line here, the water shore line that it's animated. So that's really nice. And there's also, so you can move this up and down like this. So it stays the same depth. Okay. So as you get, so as you go up and down, it will actually not affect the profile of the water. Okay. So you have, you have shallow water like this. It's actually not going to have a lot of uh, opacity, which is nice, I think. Yeah, so there's also the specular that you can modify, but usually you just leave it like that. So this is it. I hope this has been useful. If you have uh, comments or questions, leave them below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe.